In the post-syncing of Jacinto era on Sarah, things started to get a little wild. My generalized theory as to why everything started to become lambent has to do with the emulsion backtracking into the water after the hollow was flooded by humanity. This yielded some extremely dangerous creatures, but none were going to be as deadly as the lambent berserker. So get ready to be heard and smelled, because this lovely lady is tracking you wherever you may be cowering. So as we all know full well, the emulsion is somewhat of a parasite. The game Games up to this point have alluded to something is stirring up massive storms and it appears to be killing the planet entirely, but they don't really know what it is. But this parasite, at least in my opinion, doesn't just wreck worlds, it also turns the creatures living there into twisted forms more suited to the needs of the emulsion as well as more powerful. Somewhere along the line, a berserker came into contact with enough emulsion to begin the mutagenic process that turned her into the creature we see today. So let's run down the list of morphological logical changes and consequences of being exposed to this glowing yellow fuel source. So first, let's cover how this thing is going to differ from its predecessor. The creature is going to stand at 10 feet 10 inches tall or 3.302 meters tall. This is going to be about 10 inches taller than your standard berserker or 0.254 meters taller in metric. As mentioned previously, the emulsion has a nasty habit of making creatures larger and stronger than their original forms and the berserker is going to be no different. So what happens when you take a breathing tank, make it more angry, and give it stronger armor? Well, you're totally screwed of course. That is unless you have some seriously thick plot armor. Luckily for Marcus, this is going to be the case. The Lambent Berserker is going to crank the aggression levels up to 11. She's going to be faster, more durable, and stronger than your standard Berserker. Which is saying something considering the original Berserker was borderline an unstoppable beast. But I hear you. Well Roanoke, care to tell us what exactly is different? I would love to, random viewer. Let's discuss the Hammer of Dawn for a minute. This piece of human technology was designed to level cities, and did so during the beginning stages of the human locust war, uh, really close, I believe it was about 33 days after Emergence Day, when humanity began to lose the war, they decided to turn these weapons pretty much against themselves. Entire sections of the planet were sterilized by this weapon in an effort to contain the locust. This weapon will also still be effective against the original Berserkers, as it would fry their skin and eventually cook the creature. For a Lambent Berserker, however, it may as well just be rain falling on it. It does absolutely nothing, and even with all that power raining down on this creature, it can pretty much brush it off as if nothing happened. That much power shouldn't exist in a frame as small as a Berserker, but hey, it does. The durability is owed to a chitinous material that surrounds almost every inch of the creature's body. It's clear at the joints there has been reduced armor from the chitinous material, to allow for movement. Much like with the other larger forms of really any creature turned by the emulsion, this material is impenetrable to bullets but has built up so thick on the lambent berserker that not even the hammer of dawn will injure it and put it down for good. Now for my side tangent as a biologist, while the emulsion as stated does appear somewhat parasitic to a planet and a consumption of a species, once fused with their bodies it does enter a somewhat symbiotic relationship. The creature itself appears to still be somewhat alive and able to function as the emulsion existing by itself is not some mobile species. The thick hide might be explained by the parasite utilizing body resources to change the outer skin into a thick hardened material. The repurposed material could come from bones, so in my mind that would make it calcium. But this would also suggest that the creature would need to replenish their body, but I don't really see the lambent eating. So maybe the emulsion itself is some sort of material the species absorbs, like say the elements from the actual planet, that then it uses to alter the creatures. An interesting thought nonetheless. If this is the case, that would explain why the emulsion needs to turn species, and when it takes over a species, they can conquer other species on the planet so that once they have control over everything, there will be no in-house fighting and there will be nothing trying to eradicate the emulsion because the emulsion no longer has natural enemies. Okay, so now that I'm off that side discussion, the Lambent Berserker has more than just sheer durability. She also possesses the skills necessary to hunt.
stunt. The eyesight has carried over from her standard form and she is still borderline blind, so not much has changed there. Therefore, she still relies on her sense of smell and ability to hear to hunt down any human or locust in the area, which lends credence to my original hypothesis concerning if they're still alive or not, because the brain still needs to be intact to interpret this information because it hasn't been shown that emulsion really responds to stimulus. So anyways, she uses these abilities to hunt down any human or locust in the area. These senses are so powerful that the emulsion parasite has deemed it fit to keep them in their unaltered form. But coupled with her hunting abilities comes with extra speed and extra agility. When she catches a whiff of really anything in the area or hears anything moving, she can quickly move into action. While the standard berserker can only run at what she hears, the Lambent Berserker can leap. It may not sound like much, but these leaps cover a lot of ground very quickly. This makes it very hard to get out of the way, but what's even worse about it is when she leaps, she's able to ground pound, which no other infected locust is able to do. When she hits the ground, it sends emulsion flying all around as well as a shockwave that will do splash damage. The Lambent Berserker also has four large razor sharp tentacles that she can use to attack with as well. These formations have come out of the back of the creature and are used almost like extra arms and they will lunge at anything that might be in front of her. She still possesses both arms used for grabbing and tearing and both legs used for running, albeit as mentioned they are covered with thick armor and are impenetrable to bullets. The head of the creature is still surprisingly going to resemble the original berserker except the eyes have turned gold presumably from the emulsion coursing through her entire body. The head has been surrounded by a chitinous mass that seems to have fused with the neck further stabilizing and providing protection of sensitive areas against attack. Keeping with the current trend found in the lambent infected creatures, the emulsion seems to pull center mass for the infected individual. The torso is glowing with a light as most of the emulsion can be found in this area. This has caused the mouth of the berserker to glow brightly whenever she roars but also has allowed light to flood through the ribs exposing a weak point. In the chest cavity of the lambent berserker exists presumably the only weak point point on the entire Berserker. Shooting this area is the only time your bullets will be effective, but even then it will take a lot of effort to bring her down. The first time your bullets land, the Berserker will become more aggressive as you have injured her and pretty much pissed her off. She will begin jumping around, splashing emulsion over large swaths of area in an effort to down you. Landing the second attack will show you that she is actually beginning to take damage. She will begin to leak emulsion like any creature would leak blood as you have clearly pierced some sort of membrane that was housing the parasite. The third chance you get to shoot her will cause her to start leaving behind literal emulsion vapor. This is dangerous to any species in the area as even breathing in a vapor can cause humans to contract rust lung and eventually turn into formers. It is presumed that the locust can also be turned just by breathing in the emulsion vapors as well. This counter will mean that you must work quickly to get in your fourth attack. Upon landing your fourth assault, the berserker isn't quite done yet. The final act of attrition will be a massive explosion. It should be noted that any cog soldier in the area, even wearing osmium armor, will not withstand the blast. Anyone caught standing too close will be blown away into pieces by the explosion. Anyone standing further away but still too close, it will cause you to become immediately down. If a berserker gets close to you, you are entirely screwed. This creature is so powerful that she can easily destroy fortifications, cars in the way, walls, whatever you are trying to keep between you and it is going to be decimated. So I'm going to say that arguably the strongest creature you come across in the Gears of War series is going to be the Lambent Berserker. I still remember the first time I encountered this thing in Gears of War 3. I got wiped out so many times before I realized what I was actually supposed to be doing. I know, total scrub boom. Anyways, that about does it for me guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did like it, hit that button and if you want to keep up with the channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell as that will be the best way to know whenever I post. Of course I think that there is some sort of option to be notified by all or like half. Somebody had mentioned that to me today. Maybe go check that, I don't know. But it's looking like I'm posting two times a week 
in earnest, so that's working pretty well, I think. There ain't no stop in the lore train. I have a Discord, go check that out in the description. I am also on Twitter, and I will put my handle up on screen right now. Okay, so my computer is here, and as some of you will notice, I am streaming again on YouTube. You should definitely come check it out sometime. I figured out how to actually get music to play, so if you want to chill, probably watch me die a lot at whatever I'm doing, I will be there. I'm thinking about Saturday, not this weekend, but the following weekend, because I'm going to be out in Indiana this week. I have a Patreon. If you would like to support the channel, that is the best way to do it. And of course, I would like to thank my current patrons. At the Scientist tier, we have Layla Elizarin. Then we have Master BC. And last but not least, we have Fritz. Our three residents are going to be G. Anderson, Richard Muhlenberg, and Alex Parks. With their PhD in genetics, we've got Divine Whisper and John Russo. Hanging out with their Masters in Biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Andrew Lawson, Brian H. Briggs, Cameron Smith, Co Cody G. Rice, Professor, and Ryan Garnum. Next up with their bachelors in morphological sciences, there is a big fat snake. And okay, unfortunately my incense has been lost, or maybe it never existed, I don't know. I was scrolling through the internet the other day and someone commented what Ohigo means. So let's just pretend like that's not what it means. So we've got Ohigo Comics, Average Soul, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Joseph Radical, and Natsuki Chiaki. Thank you for supporting guys, I really do appreciate it. So so that's going to do it for me. As always, I will see y'all in the next one.